Hey everyone, Mike Miller, Herald Times, joined by columnist Jeremy Price, coming to you after Indiana's 34-32 win here at Memorial Stadium over Maryland, snapping a four-game losing skid that uh, stretches back to the last week of September, the uh, the Rutgers game, which I think we've all tried to forget happened. Um, <laughs> Uh, but none, a, a win nonetheless, a much-needed win, of course, for Indiana with two games remaining now. Indiana needs one victory to get to that uh, elusive six-win plateau uh, that it uh, you know, failed to reach last year. It's gonna, it looks like it's going to come down to a, uh, another meaningful bucket game in a couple weeks here after next week's yeah. uh, trip to Michigan. Uh, what very well could be a couple of, probably going to be a couple of five and six teams uh, shooting for bowl eligibility. Purdue lost their game at Minnesota. I believe they have Wisconsin next week. Uh, so, yeah, you're, you are potentially looking at a, a very, very meaningful bucket game in Bloomington here in just a couple weeks. But as you mentioned, uh, you know, the, the threshold for artistically beautiful football passed a long time ago for this Indiana football team. So uh, this was a very bottom line type game, and, and there, were, there was good, there was bad, it was up, it was down. Yeah, it was typical Indiana football, except for IU finally found a way to pull one out, which is something that hasn't happened in a while. Yeah, like you said, it was uh, you had four takeaways, but you also had Maryland chunking its way to a 500 and chunking, uh, <laughs> cashing its way to 542 yards, I think it was. Um, they never really got the big play, but they got a lot of plays in there. I think Indiana said that uh, they played a lot of zone, tried to keep in front of them for the most part with the running attack that went three or four guys deep, although, you know, that Maryland had some injuries too today that kind of shortened its backfield. But nonetheless, still got yards and, and seemed to be on its way to getting more at the end of the game before a, uh, a strip and a recovery from Indiana sealed this one with mm-hmm. uh, about a minute left. Uh, offensively, we saw some explosive plays. We saw a, a good amount of down, downfield throws. Uh, but at the same time, it was kind of like what? Uh, you said they had, uh, what, on the seven drive, or they had seven drives with, Points six yeah six Mar- with six with Maryland had seven, seven drives with points and then four turnovers and just the two punts yeah whereas IU had five punts today yeah. but it I was they only had two turnovers which probably too too many because they weren't uh, they weren't gr- they weren't good turnovers no. <laughs> there's not a good such a good thing no but. there is um, but yeah no it was it was very uh, very hot and cold at times uh, really offense defense you know even special teams. Uh, not as much special teams, but it was in effect a very kind of topsy turvy game. And, you know, well, I, just... I would argue it was special teams as well because uh, you know Indiana started kicking short originally in this game to try and limit some of the Maryland kick returns and sort of sacrificing a little bit of field position in the process. Then did finally give up the one big kick mm-hmm. return uh, there in the second half, and then the the last kickoff was that was the best kick coverage of the day mm-hmm. that pinned Maryland deep and, and wound up being the difference possibly between them taking the lead so uh, very much off and on hit and miss from possession to possession from play to play in this game but you, you mentioned the down the field throws and I think that was the biggest thing uh, that grabbed your attention about this game because I it just felt like Indiana finally came out swinging in this game you know kind of very aggressive going for it. Uh, a nothing to lose mentality that we've kind of been wondering where that's been to this point in the season. You know, so often this Indiana team has looked so conservative and and afraid to make the mistake and, and lose the game instead of playing to win. And obviously that approach hasn't worked out. So to, to flip it on its ear and, and put yourself in a position to win this game was, was progress. I thought it was interesting too. Tom Allen said that, you know, for, for a little bit now, he's been saying, you know, throw the ball downfield. He even <laughs> used that verbal cadence that, you know, he's been, at least recently, adamant about the need for this offense to throw the ball downfield, which I, I thought, I think we both thought was interesting in the fact that is there, is it, uh, you know, is, has Tom Allen felt the need to really, you know, come down on the offense, on an offense that he maybe views as too conservative and really issue that mandate, especially of late. Yeah, it's an interesting debate because – because obviously there's a lot of factors going into that there, and you don't know if, they, if that's a case where Tom Allen wants the ball thrown more down the field and Mike DeBoard not so much, or is it a case where Peyton Ramsey's been too quick to check the ball down instead of looking mm-hmm. down the field, uh, but the down the field option was always there. Um, Ramsey at one point post game kind of suggested that some teams have been trying to take away the, the deep ball from Indiana and force them to go underneath, uh, which... Uh, 
maybe sometimes, but I'm I'm not sure to the extent that Indiana has gone underneath this year. They've still missed a lot of one on ones. Too. Yeah, I mean, they just yeah. haven't identified them. Right, right. So I think there's a lot of moving parts and pieces to that conversation. But the bottom line is, instead of when in doubt, check it down and be conservative. The the theme much more today was when in doubt, push the envelope. You know, give yourself the opportunity to make a play. Give your wide receivers a chance to make the play. I think, I think the other part of that is Tom Allen has seen his secondary victimized by teams just taking shots down the field and drawing pass interference penalties or whatever. And he's like, well, we've got big wide receivers. We're mm-hmm. we're capable of doing those same things. Let's let's push the issue. Let's create some matchup problems. Let's possibly get some pass interference calls, which Indiana probably got more today than they've had all season combined. <laughs> Which it's kind of maddening to think about. It's not like these big receivers just appeared. It's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's not like Donovan Hale just surfaced out of the end zone or you know, Nick Westbrook walked through the cornfield. I mean, these guys have been here all year long. But I mean, to that, if, if they are going to be able to make that a consistent part of the offense and actually show the willingness and the ability to actually, you know, do that, go downfield and, and challenge, make those challenges. I mean, I just go back to the Minnesota game where it, it took them, you know, three and a half solid quarters before they really started making those throws. And then you get in the fourth quarter, you're throwing downfield to, to Donovan Hale, and he's catching the ball. I mean, mm-hmm. Ramsey put some good zip on those throws too today. So it's just like if you can actually show the willingness and ability to consistently and, and, and eagerly do that, you know, this offense has the potential to move a little bit more than it has, I think. And all that said, I think it's funny that Indiana continually finds itself in this conundrum of how aggressive should I be, how aggressive should I not be with uh, – pushing that ball down the field. In the Minnesota game, it was you get the ball back, chance to win the game, and you wind up running the ball three times and and punting. Today, that last possession, Indiana breaks off a big run from Stevie Scott. Then they go into hurry-up mode and run the ball three times and wind up settling for a field goal. So sort of, uh, do I be aggressive? Do I not be aggressive? What do I do? So uh, very much a push and pull for the Hoosiers there. Huge win here. Again, it keeps it gives you something to play for over these final two weeks. Uh, bad matchup next week at the Big House, obviously a place we all know Indiana has struggled in recent years, and really even this season a matchup that certainly doesn't go well for Indiana. I don't think. Uh, but then again, you come back home, you get Purdue, um, and a chance where you know you, no matter where these teams seem to be in recent years, this bucket game has always been pretty competitive. So this year it seems it'll be even more so with the chance for the postseason on the line for again potentially both teams. So. Uh, we'll see where they get back here. Our computer's about to die here. We gotta sign off. Oh.